Whoa, I'm back. It's been a while. It's me. It's I. It's Jordan. Uh, you're listening to Create and Destroy, and this is the first episode I've uploaded in nearly a month. Um, I'm sure you haven't been, you know, sitting and refreshing the page. I'm sure you had other things to do anyway, but I'm pumped to upload this episode with my good friend, Steve Sammartino. I've been wanting to do a podcast with Steve for a while, and today our... Um, calendars aligned and we got in the car and we went down for a surf in Torquay and on the way back I surprised him with uh, two big fluffy microphones and a recorder and kind of talked him into having this epic conversation recorded um, so we could all listen to it and have a good laugh. Now, Steve, if you haven't heard of Steve Sammartino before, Steve is uh, one of Australia's leading futurists. He's got three books out in the universe, which are all epic. All of uh, his books, will, all the links for his stuff will be in the show notes below. But he's a, uh, a, a futurist, like I said, and he speaks about you know, all things technology and disruption and the impact on on us as humans and humanity. Uh, I love hearing him speak. He, he, he often breaks down really complex topics into a way that, you know, you and I can understand. And this conversation is, is no different. So check out the uh, show notes for any links to the things that we discuss. Hopefully I've caught them all. And uh, that's that. This is Create and Destroy, brought to you by Rochambeau Studios. I am Geordie, and as always, if you've got any questions, any concerns, thoughts, feedback, or you want to come on the show, hit me up. Um, you'll find me on Instagram, at Jordan Jan, um, or Gian. We always laugh because I say it different every time, so take your pick. doesn't bother me. Um, cool. Let's get into it. This is Create and Destroy. Thanks for listening. You. Go make this by Friday, have it out. You know Here what I mean? Are. And just ideas division, sorry. I've got a complex already of cop cars, so hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I'll take a photo of this. This is all time. Mate, so, it is 1976. Here in this car here. Say hello to Steve Sammartino. We uh, just went for a surf down in Torquay. Uh, it was pretty fun. Um, and we ages ago said that we wanted to do a podcast to the beach and back. And, um, <laughs> and here we are. We're doing it. So th- we're on Create and Destroy. I've, I'm back. I'm back with a vengeance. I haven't put anything up for a little while. I'll tell you why later. Um, but Steve, Tron, welcome. Mate, thanks for having me. These microphones are epic. <laughs> Everyone, I've just taken this photo and I am hoping my main man, Geordie, or Jay Fresh as I call him, because Jordan Gian Fresco, a little bit of a tea in there. I call him Jay Fresh, man. I just gave him a rapper's name. He doesn't even rap. He's got a name. So we've got these microphones here. They're like something from a 1976 sports report. They've yeah. got the big fluffy like <laughs> foam thing on top. And we're driving down a highway with microphones in our hand. This isn't illegal yet because no one's done it. It can only be illegal once the authorities are unhappy with what they're seeing. They haven't seen it yet, so they can't yet be unhappy. But they will be eventually. I do have, I've got a bit of a complex. As soon as we click record, now when the cars come past as I'm driving, I'm, like, I'm ducking my hand down. So if, if the audio is a little bit dodgy, I apologize in advance. But Steve, can you tell the world, uh, everybody listening, what's your little intro when someone says, hey, what do you do? Do you, wow. have, do you have a go-to? Not really. I Often I get called a futurist because I rub my face in tech and I just <laughs> like to, I just like to, that's what I do. And you I just want to rub my face in it and then just say, listen, technology, humanity, business, put those things together. I'm going to tell you about the future. Now, I can't tell you who the winner is going to be in the future, but I can certainly tell you the trajectory and the shape of the future. And that's what I do, both in books and on stage and on radio and TV. So, yeah, so three books, key uh, keynotes, or every day, it feels like. <laughs> it feels like, yeah. It feels like every day around the world. Um, and you just recorded a pilot, Future Sandwich, for a TV show, right? That's right, Future Sandwich TV. I you can know f- what? You can follow it on Instagram, hey? Y- yeah, you can. Yeah. And uh, at San Martino, my, my updates, but we'll be on TV. I'll put all the links in the description, by the way, yep. gang. Later on this year, which is basically 
future of technology and humanity and we're going to break down all of the cool stuff that's happening in the world so in tasty little bites that everyone can understand. So let's let's talk about that. What is your uh, most favourite piece of maybe tech? If we'll start at tech, but mm. we just had a, an epic conversation over breakfast about what innovation it really is and, and neither of us think it's tech. But... Um, <laughs> What's your favorite piece of, of interesting things happening right now, tech or otherwise? You know, the really interesting thing happening right now is people are starting to realize that their privacy and their security is really worth something. Uh, and yeah. people took it away from us without asking and they tricked us. And when I say people, I mean big technology companies. And I'm really interested to see how we take back technology in a way so that the internet can be the emancipation tool that we always thought it would be where people like you and me get the tech in our hands so we can create the connections we really want. And right now what we've got is a few big tech companies sort of controlling the game a bit, which probably isn't what we hope for. And I think in the next year or so, we're going to see some really interesting stuff where um, we regulate. Now, when I say regulate, I mean regulate in a way that creates more competition and a more capitalist society because everything seems to be aggregating into a few hands, the powerful few. So that's one of the things I think is really interesting. It's socio-political and oh. that that's interesting because technology isn't just a thing like a wildfire that goes out of control. A little bit like fire, we need to guide it, we need to have guardrails and we need to make sure that the technology is serving humans, not that we're serving it. Because I mean, when it started, when I first jumped on, I think the first for me was Blogspot, um, which wasn't socials at all. But I guess the first time of no, putting it was, a, it was early door socials. Yeah, and I guess that was putting you know a taste of of myself into the world, and then that turned into MySpace, Facebook, um, you know, and then the onslaught of everything else coming after that. But there was a certain level of, I guess, trust that I put into the organisations that I was putting my information onto at the start because I'm not going to read the terms. Like when I sign up for an account on a platform, <laughs> I didn't, didn't you read the 23,000 uh, words that, yeah. that they update every week? Like if you were reading the terms and conditions for everything and every update, dude, you cannot leave your house. You're just reading all day, every day. That's it. Which again, that's one of the things, right? You let If we're going to have terms and conditions, A, they need to be written in a language that everyone can understand who's a non-lawyer. And I actually think we need a standard set of terms and conditions. Around data and privacy? That's right. So a company can't have its own rules and and, uh, policies. That's bullshit. We We need one set of rules we can all understand that we all sign up to. And then there's things that we can have in by exception. But generally, the system right now is just so broken, it's not funny. So... I think the traditional path for this would, like I can just imagine insurance companies jumping in and going, we'll insure your online data. Do you think that's good or bad? Well, Because that's that's a Band-Aid, right? right? So so that's a Band-Aid. I mean, it's true that, as we know, businesses are about solving problems and when new problems emerge, new business opportunities emerge. And so uh, some of the things that we'll have insurance for are hacking insurance and data protection insurance. And you'll probably... You know, also have your photos insured for your memories and your family. And in the same way that you insure physical artifacts, we will insure uh, digital artifacts. But Mm. I think that that's a kind of a little bit like it's post-action control. It's Band-Aid. You're right. And it's not what we want, right? But what we want to have is something that respects humans with the use of technology. And Mm. to your point, and I did cut you off, was that – and I apologize for all the times that I will do that in the next (laughs) half an hour (laughs) uh, in advance. (laughs) Uh, What we need to do is say, okay, we we put a lot of trust in digital companies in the first instance because they actually came out and said, we're different. We're not like Exxon and Mobil and General Motors and General Electric. We're the good guys. Mm. Look, we've got cornflower blue logos and primary colors and we make stuff from Lego in our office. Mm. Like We're just like you. uh, Yeah, we're just like you and, and we're here for you until they weren't. Exactly, yeah. Right. And I trusted them too, right? I thought it was different. Do you but think, you know what? It, yeah, we need to We're scratching fix that. the surface here, but it seems to me that every time that this conversation kind of happens, I can't ignore the fact that all of the organizations that we talk about um, all started with some sort of runway of venture capital funding that oh, yeah. didn't really force them to find the business model from the start to make money. So it was, hey, we're doing this for the right reasons, trust us. But then they realized there's heaps of money in data 
and now yeah. it kind of gets skewed. So how much do you think um, we've actually created this problem by not finding the right business model at the start for this kind of, you know, tech tech base um, business? Have we kind of made this problem ourselves by Dude, putting the yeah. data up there and by the way that these businesses started? So that's a very smart question from a young cat like hey, yourself, hey. Jay Fresh, mate. Very, very smart question. The answer to that is yes, we have created this problem to, uh, for ourselves, but this has happened in history many, many times. The term for the marketplace we're in now is surveillance capitalism. Okay. So, so surve- that, what's yeah, that? Well, I'm always here to bring in something new. So surveillance capitalism is the idea that we surveil our consumers or our users of our data. We give them a free product, but we take from them something that was previously uncommercialized. Okay. Now, historically, the so way an unknown business model, an unknown business yeah. model. But let's just let's just say that this thing was free and open, and it didn't have. I'm going to say the word offense around it, and this will make sense in a moment. Data never had offense around it. Yeah. Right. No one. The only people making money out of data going back in time were maybe media companies, but it was very, yeah. You know, they're guessing who's watching TV and demographics and so on. Yeah. And and maybe credit card companies, but. Previously, your information was just something that you just had and it wasn't commercialized. What these companies have managed to do with their digital tools is put a fence around things and take ownership of it. Now, this happens Mm. in capitalism all the time. Many things today that are commercialized and owned by private companies were previously public goods or private goods that no one owned. So land is a classic one. People come to Australia and go, hi, we've got this thing called gunpowder. We're white people from England and we're putting a fence around this land and now it's ours. And the indigenous people are like, well, no one can own the land. What do you mean no one can? How yeah. do you own land? And they that go, was, oh, we, that we wasn't just a do. concept that was understood. It wasn't a concept. And so, it still isn't. So, and this is similar to that. So what we have is a form of colonization where our private lives have been colonized by digital companies. Huh. And, so, and, so, and so because it hadn't happened before, we don't have an awareness of stopping it because it's like, what do you, what do you mean? We're already given it away before we realized that they owned it. So... Is it's that, a form of trickery. Is he, <laughs> it really is. I've been bamboozled. Is that because maybe at the start it was innocent and free and all, the, yeah, all those things? Yeah, of course it was. That's it was right. idealistic. It and was idealistic great. and I was like that too. You know, I, and, and I'm not now, but I, I really was. So, and, and many of us were. And I think the large majority of people uh, who, who might not be studying you know, economics and the digital economy like you and me, might, you, know, you and I might be, and so a lot of people aren't realizing the value of what they're giving away. Because So to make that, I guess, uh, a real life example, it feels like to me that as our technology, in, like our te- technological abilities increase and we go, oh, we can do this now, then that's being matched with, oh, and we know that these people like these that. sorts of things because they've freely uploaded that information onto the internet. Yeah, or they've and gone now, here and they've looked at that and we've tracked them with our cookies and all of this yeah. stuff. But you're right though. I don't think the digital company started out with this intention. You know, Google had that mantra, you know, don't be evil and mm. Facebook says we want a more open and connected society and Twitter says change the world 140 characters at a time and Amazon the world's biggest store and cheap prices for you. So they all, yeah. I think, start out with altruistic intentions. And your, your idea on the venture capital is, is is the perfect synopsis because what happens is the venture capital, uh, the money, they get given the money because they go, hey, this is a new burgeoning market. We're not sure how we'll make money. And then the rubber hits the road and the VC say, yo, time yeah. for the payback. Kind of pa- and yeah, so then they, payback, they found yeah. this surveillance advertising model. I think Google's model was a little bit more honest because theirs was – AdWords, right? Which is great mm. because it's like I'm searching for this. Of course, I'm searching for new cars, and add-on new cars is relevant and good. And I think that right? was a and that's, smaller, and that's okay. That was a smaller step, though. That it was, was a smaller. Small, it was the that start. Was, that was digital classifieds, that's right. basically. Digital that was, classified, and it made perfect sense because instead of saying, "Here's an ad. We hope you're interested in it." When you're driving past a billboard on a freeway, they're mm. saying, "Dude, we know you're interested because you just typed in. You're looking for this thing." So we yeah. one size fits one. We send you the ad. Because you said you're looking for this, and that, and I think we all buy into that. But when Google, on its Gmail, starts yeah. reading what's in your emails, which is what they do, yeah, oh, to yeah. send you ads, I didn't know that. Didn't you know that? No. So see those terms and conditions, the twenty-three thousand words. Them. I've read them all actually, just as part of my 
research process. Uh, some of the things in there you would find inordinate. For example, every photo you put up on Instagram, Instagram has a perpetual license on that forever and can use it in any way that they want, including putting an ad on a billboard with your face on it if they chose to. Really? Yes. Wow. And so wow. I, I bet, has that happened so far? It hasn't. Or they're but, just like, but hmm, they could we've do got it. it. So yeah. what they do is they get rights to things that they don't use today but might be able to use tomorrow. Now, would that right still – because this is, I guess, in Instagram land and that's where I spend most of my time. Is that the same for peer-to-peer? Because, you know, reposting and reblogging other people's content. Oh, well, this is the interesting thing, right? This is why we need a Magna Carta for the internet. You know, like a, a set of overriding rules that, yeah. that the globe signs up to because it's a global economy. Forget nation states. Here's the Ten Commandments yeah, of the Yeah, Ten Commandments of the internet, right? Yeah. Uh, Fuck, because, let's write them. Yeah, let's write them. So, well, as Sir, Sir Tim Berners-Lee has proposed that and even put some in place, which, oh, really? which is, yeah, a really smart idea. He's the inventor of the internet, the World Wide Web for the listeners there. Uh, and so a, an interesting example is that exactly what you say because this is a communications tool where you communicate something with me what happens is is that I haven't necessarily signed up to what you've signed up to so let me give you the Gmail example uh, I'm on stevesamatino.com and I run an email through that yep. right, my own website but you might be running Gmail for example I'm just making this up yep. now I send you an email to your Gmail I haven't signed up to Gmail but you have, but yeah. then Gmail reads my email, but I didn't sign up to that. At some point real soon, there's going to be court cases on this stuff. Oh, now, okay. Google yeah. says we don't read it. It's all private because it's underneath the veil of machine learning and the language and it only serves it up so there's no privacy invasion. But I didn't sign up to it, but you did. And so this is where the okay. two-way economy doesn't make sense because an individual might not sign up to something, but the person who has had that information transferred to or from them may not have signed up to it. And that's where we're going to get problems going down the line. Now, an example of that, um, I've just moved across, I do you Gmail, um, and they had a thing called Inbox, which was epic. I don't know if you used that. No, and they shut it down because it wasn't epic enough and not enough people were not using enough, it. Not, but not it was financially a, epic for them. No, it only made <laughs> 99 million a year. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, so it was, it was epic. And so I've just jumped across to Gmail like everybody else. And I've noticed that it keeps finishing my sentences with the actual words and slang that I've, I use in the past. Of course it does. Because it's reading... Of course it Plain is. Out. And so at the start, I go, oh, that's awesome. Great. Yeah, yeah I click tab, awesome. I go but next. But then you know what happens? This is a really interesting one. So the idea of machine learning, and you can see it on a Google search, as yeah. you're typing, it gives you five options of the words that you may type. Here's yeah. what starts to happen. And, and, and this is for mature people listening, which, of course, your audience are intelligent people, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be listening. So all of a sudden, if someone's finishing your sentences – do they start to tap into your mind and do your thinking for you? What yeah. happens to is, your independence of mind? Is that taking away from my free will? Well, that, I, certainly. 100%. It's ab- absolutely. How can it not be? I because don't get to I, finish. Someone's finishing your sentences for you. Now, it sounds innocuous enough. Yeah, I was going to write the word surfing when I wrote S-U-R-F. Sure. Hmm. Right? Yeah. But, gee, I don't know. Uh, then, I, think as, I think as humans, we are kind of wired to take the path of least resistance and the easiest possible option. Of that's course. That's what we want to do. And that's, that's what and we've that's why, through that's our DNA. That's why we don't read the terms and conditions. Exactly, because we trust and that's okay. And that's the same reason why we go to the same coffee shop, we go to the same place to buy shoes because we've we've had success there before, so we'll do it Eat again. Eat the same foods because we know that didn't poison me last time. Exactly. Like we need to take what I call cognitive shortcuts. Yeah. So a cognitive shortcut is the world's complex. If mm. we find a way to get through the complexity and have like a little shortcut of what we eat, what we do, what we say, then we use that and, yeah. and we trust each other in that. And that's really, really important. And and that is starting to be taken away, which doesn't seem dangerous now. And it's a little bit like, oh, you know, when we started burning coal, a little bit of coal in the air, the wind blows it away, it's fine. Talking about burning coal. Did you see that car? I did see that car. Nearly on fire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus. It's old school, man. Old school. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, I think it's interesting, right? And I, I don't want to be negative, right? Because I'm a lover of tech. I just want to mm. – I just want – 
I just want tech to be given back to the people a bit. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a positive person. The future, I think, is awesome and the technology is awesome, but it's a bit like a wildfire. And I think that we just need to learn to, to know when to turn it off, know when to go, yeah, maybe we won't have that one. We don't need, we need to get better with the switches in what, what's on, what's off, what's what's human and what isn't. Because sometimes you can go too far down and go, oh, yeah, you know all those forests we cut down? They were kind of good, man, that we needed those forests. And yeah, privacy is a yeah. bit like that. Do you feel every – like, so I have so many mixed emotions when we talk about this sort of thing because I, I immediately think of the founders of the business. So, yeah, the Zuckerberg and the, you know – Jackson, Larry and Sergi yeah, and all of that, yeah. yeah. And I feel that when they started, it was a platform for a hundred or so people, and very much like probably a, pa- a passion project, which turned into a business, and that's awesome. And and I mean, we're both, I guess, hate the word, but we're both entrepreneurs. We both yeah, work mate, for I'm ourselves, hundred percent. Like, yeah, we just just do things. I prefer like I'm a business owner. Simple you know, as actually, that. That's I prefer funny. that. I reckon the word entrepreneur, certainly the word startup, I don't really like that much anymore yeah. either. I prefer the idea of small business. Yeah. Because small it's great. business says, I'm going to do this old fashioned thing called profit and I'm going to self fund my projects and I'm yeah. going to be, yeah, I no, like I, that better I, as well. I do that because when I say entre- I hear entrepreneur leads into kind of slimy, the, the least favorable parts of the startup world. I agree. 100%. And I've never taken funding or any of that sort of stuff. And so that's why that's why I, I feel have, funny but, uh, about in, it. In a different life, when it, I took funding when it was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's, I fund my own projects. But yeah, anyway, and no, it's not that I'm um, I'm opposed to it. It's just that currently I haven't had a situation where I've needed it because I've found another way. Yep. Now back to the original point is how much does the you know the Jacks and the and the you know Larry and Sergio. Larry and all the guys how much do you think that they feel like this loss of control because they've actually created something in society that's changed the world. Okay. And so it's beyond a business now. It's yeah. now like – Well, it's people, infrastructure. It's – yeah. Now we're talking about something very, very different and all of the fingers are being pointed at this single person but the result – all they did was create a platform. They didn't create the actions that take, on, take place on it which is half of the problem. We are putting the information up there, but then they're developing ways oh, to read wait a minute. it. I don't know about that. Okay, okay we'll, get, we'll get to that. They yeah. don't take responsibility for what's on it. I disagree, but I'll tell you why in a minute. But let's first answer the first question is, they came with good intentions to create a great service which has value for humanity, right? Tick, tick, tick. We all agree yeah. on that. And then do you think it got to I a think, point that was way bigger than expected? Yeah. Yes, that's, and that's like, exactly what happened. And they're like, holy shit. Yeah. Basically, they came in and changed the world, no doubt. Yeah. 100% agree. And I don't think they had the intentions for it to go that way. But what happens is once a company becomes public, the financial system takes control. Yeah, yeah. Right. And even if you're the CEO, you're answerable to shareholders. But yeah. I do think something weird happened. I think, you know, our environment and our the things that we get exposed to change our persona. I think that it is true that once certain people get given an inordinate amount of power at a very early life stage, most of them were young in their twenties, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, I actually think it changes their perspective on what's allowable and acceptable. And I think that most of these founders of what started out as companies with good intentions, I think that. Uh, the god complex they became megalomaniacs with the power they, they just started to just yeah, to, you know just to, just to feed on that it just was just too tasty and, and they just went you know what yeah I'll tell the world a more open and connected society Zuckerberg when really what yeah. he's creating is a more disconnected and divisive society yeah right yeah yeah and, and I'm going to get back to the second part of that question where they're not responsible for what's on their platform uh, I think that they started out as one thing and I think these characters, I'm going to call them characters who run these companies, have morphed into something that might not be what they were at the start or intended to be. But I think that actions speak louder than words and their behavior patterns tell me that they're not the people that they once were or purported to be. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you there. I think so 100% then, because yeah. like, you see that in, you see in the, the truth. It, is in the actions. Different, yeah. hey, actions are truth. You can say what you want. I don't care what someone says. Show me how you behave, then I'll see the truth. Yeah. I think would you agree then it's it's not just one person running the company, no, no. of it's, course. It's it's a but it's culture. The culture that was the culture created in Silicon Valley through. is toxic. 
absolutely yeah. become toxic because they're the new masters of the universe. Yeah, they're, they're running the show. They're running the show. They're the masters yeah. of the universe. Now, what I meant by um, they don't control what is posted, yeah, as uh, in I can – Okay, they don't I control can, it, but they control what you see. Yeah, and that's can, maybe even more they powerful. They condone and moderate it. Condone, they're, moderate, bubble up, algorithmically choose – and the things that they choose, the algorithms, we've got to remember, what's the objective of Facebook Corporation? What's the number one objective? Well, to what? To keep eyes on the screen for as right. long okay. as possible How to sell do you advertising. Do that? Put things I want to see there. Wow. You yes. Think? There's a lot of things you and I want to see, but there are certain things which create emotions, which create things that make you angry or fearful or that sort of stuff works harder and they know mm. it engagement is usually a function of the things that are most outrageous and so the algorithms so are fear, set up fear mongering right yeah right fear fear mongering and emotional things that you have strong powerful opinions it's the on old, it's the old media if it bleeds it leads right it's exactly yeah, that it's, that, it's right? exactly that right and it's that, that on the steroids. if it bleeds it if it bleeds, it leads. Yeah, yeah. It bleeds, it right. Leads. It's that on steroids, and so this tends to be more divisive content. So extreme left, extreme mm. left, extreme positions. Yeah, you know, we now mm. live in. I call it. Yeah, you know, the, the global economy is extremistan. That's the name of the country we live in. Right. Jeez. E- everything's extreme. Yeah. Right. Because that stuff works. For because sure. Because I get really upset about coal companies talking about the you know, the future of humanity's coal because I care about the environment as a surfer and you know mm. and I get upset. So I'm more likely to read that thing. And they know it and they just keep serving it up. And if you're an extreme left person, they'll keep serving that up. If you're an extreme right person, they'll put, they'll, that, they'll put yeah. that up. And here's what happens. The moderate middle gets lost, right? And so yeah. they will push at the content which serves their objectives, not necessarily what humanity needs. Now, do you think that the objective now, you know, all of these companies, most of these companies being private, I mean being public, public yeah. Um, and then reporting back to their shareholders and to the, the greater world, a, a massive, massive, I guess, number that they show is screen time. It's it's saying, hey, the average user is on our platform for oh, an we're extra absolutely addicted. seven minutes a day, and that's a hundred percent increase from last quarter. And that's that, of course they would be measuring that stuff. That's what rises. So they want to create that addictive, absolutely, that addictive thing. Now, do you think we started talking about the the unknown business model? I can't help but think, could you imagine a world where Facebook was ten dollars a month rather than free? I don't and reckon then the it'll financial work. And I model they know would be that different. Too. You, you don't think why not? Why wouldn't it work? Uh, if they turned it on now, you would get a massive drop off. But if they went, hey, guess what? Facebook's now the same as Netflix. It's nine ninety five a month or whatever it is, and you get this. They've got what seven billion users, eight billion users. Nah, Facebook's two point three, I think. Is it? Oh. Yeah, seven billions of the whole world. The eight whole billions, world. like <laughs> yeah, a couple no. of people from Mars added in, right? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, that's all right. Yeah. Um, Lots so, of humans. Yeah. No, but they, hang they, on, they no, huge. I, the number's huge because I think the number that I'm seeing, I know it's definitely not a billion, but it was including businesses and accounts. I think it was an account number I saw. Uh, but yeah, even anyway, so, I think, anyway. I think it's over two. It's certainly under three billion. I know that. Well, it turns out there's only about 60% of the world is on the internet. So mm. so if you haven't got the internet, you haven't got Facebook. No. <laughs> Great insight. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm always <laughs> dropping, dropping truth bombs, brother. That's That's how I roll here. <laughs> um, it's an actual printed book that's like the highlight reel printed yeah, and yeah, delivered as right. a new yeah, newspaper exactly uh, I wonder yeah, if it, well, I think would it they, did, okay so it would have changed for YouTube, sure YouTube YouTube I, I actually pay subscribe to not have the ads Do so I, yeah I pay 15 a month and I get some other content that is unavailable like they've got movies and stuff oh. so I've got kids movies got and all that got a plug in for that yeah, there you go sorry about it <laughs> <laughs> right and um so, so that, that, that I would pay for. Uh, and there's a few other services I pay for. Facebook isn't one of them. I wouldn't no. pay for it. You've got to remember that of their couple of billion members, um, a large portion of those, it might be up towards a billion, live in third world economies where they might be living on $50 a month. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right? So, so, so nine- for us in a wealthy Western market like Australia, then you know, $10 a month, sure, it's doable, but... As you and I both know, <laughs> all mm. these services, 10 here, 10 there, it all adds up. And, it and it's like, you know, how many streaming services are you going to have? Prime, Netflix, 
YouTube, yeah. Hulu, uh, Roku. It's like yeah, what? Hey you. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah. So is there? So I oh. reckon I reckon it would hurt their business model because their business model is selling ads. Now selling ads, you need as many people as possible because that's who you can serve it up to, and. The average, and I can tell you what the number is, in the US they make $25 per person per year. That's it. It's not that much, is it? But it adds up. Adds up. Yeah. But, you know, if you lo- lost half of those people and charged $10 a month, well, your advertising is going to go down as well and you might not be as profitable. And mm. I, for sure they would have done the studies on this. Definitely. The uh, I think... Well, you know how you can sign into so many things using your Gmail or Facebook now? Oh, yeah, I'd never do that. That's yeah, like listeners that's out there, the s- warning, never, ever, ever use a social account to sign in. What you need to do is set up a couple of crappy emails that you don't care about, right? You have crappy email one, crappy email two, crappy email three at gmail.com and you just, yeah. you just sign in with those. Never, ever sign in with your social accounts because then they're tracking you everywhere. That's one of the first things you taught me. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Did I follow it? I hope so. <laughs> no. Oh, come on. Don't be lazy. <laughs> I use my Google. Oh, I, oh no. I'm so lazy. No, but it depends what it is. I've got the same strategy, essentially, that you, you taught me the three. Um, if it's got information I really care about, banking, that sort of stuff, anything hardcore to do with password. my bank. Yeah, hardcore password and real Different email passwords. and all those sorts of things. Then when it's signing into Facebook and then signing up for Netflix – like, oh no, Netflix because my card's yeah, on it. I use a different card. one. Anywhere your credit card um, is, you've got to be hardcore, but you got to remember yeah, that. You know those other ones? I just, like my YouTube yeah. is connected to my Gmail. Yeah, that's so okay. Well, this is the like, same company, so yeah. that's okay. But um, yeah, you, you, and this and this comes back to what the whole problem is here is that this stuff has so ensconced in our lives mm. that opting out is not an option. Well, is, is not opting you can't, out just. You can't opt out. How can you opt out of the digital account. world? You can't. Delete all accounts. If you delete keep, all your accounts. Keep an email and disconnect your bank from everything. Well, you, you're pretty much saying I'm going to live without electricity. That's the modern day equivalent. You, you can't do it because for me in the work that I do, I need to be Ooh. across what's happening in digital as you do. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I need to have access to these tools. And here's the weird thing is if you pay, they're still tracking you even if you pay. Yeah. They just give you they some, are, like, oh, we yeah. won't show you ads, for example. But they're still tracking you. So, so it's, uh, it's a tricky one because you can't participate in the modern economy not using these digital tools. So do you think you get to a point where you either get super paranoid and you don't know what's happening <laughs> and on one side of the spectrum and the other you just go, oh, fuck it. Yeah. We're all fucked. You know, <laughs> and then this is where you've got to be moderate about it and you've got to be realistic. So I try and take some precautions where I can, but they've got me, right? Because mm. it's kind of like saying I don't like polluting, but I kind of have to drive a car to go to work. It's a little bit like that, isn't it? It's exactly the same. You can't not participate yeah. unless you want to go, you know, go to Byron Bay and live in a tree and eat nuts. It's like... Yeah. How do, you, how do you not participate? And, yeah. So I don't want to be all tinfoil hat and I don't want to be a fool who just goes, oh, whatever. So you kind of live in the moderate middle, I guess. I think that's for now. The so only thing can, we can do. It really is. But but I think even having this discussion now is valuable, right? Because well, hopefully awareness. a few people listening going, oh, well, I didn't really think of it like that. And the environment, which we're all across now and we all get it and climate change, all of us get it and we go, and even the, the coal lovers and the right wingers, they know too. They're just too greedy and they want money. They know as well. They're For just, sure. They're just so greedy in short term that they just choose to pretend it's not true. Yeah, and they think- They know. Uh, the, yeah, their attitude They're just there, lying to themselves. Well, the attitude is, well, I'll be dead by I'll then. I'll be dead. That's exactly that's, it. That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the whole Don't worry about my grandkids. I'll be dead, yeah, whatever. Fuck that's, how yeah, care, that's, that's how caring they are. And until they can see a viable business um, model- on the other side of the fence, you know, with electric or well, solar. Well, they know there's that. business models there, but the problem but is they don't want to transition. Right yeah, yeah well, too- they don't want to transition their business. Well, and it's a sunk cost fallacy because yeah, they've, right. sent, they've spent, yeah. you know, however many billion on yeah, setting up the oil They're still going to be rigs. out of business anyway. They're, yeah. they're pulling it, yeah. yeah. And so, until some, someone comes in and, and does it in a big deal way. The education process, like... Remember, there was no environmental movement until the 60s and the 70s where people started talking about things like pollution and, and you know, air quality and whatever, and now it's it's ordained. You know, my young children who are under the age of 10 yeah. know all about it and come For home sure. and tell me. And so, but right now with digital, this is an edge case conversation that few people are having. We're having it, 
and other thought leaders might be having it. There's one of those words, thought oh, leader. Yeah, another one we love. <laughs> might have dropped that puppy in. Yeah. Uh, but, but this conversation needs to be had so that we can educate the populace and markets are conversations. Well, First we have the conversation, then we start to act. Well, but come, without the conversation, there won't be any action. Because the conversation leads into right. the knowledge, which then leads into, into the actions. supply and demand. Exactly. And if the demand isn't there for a certain service or for fuel or for oil-based or whatever it is because – goes away and it, then we, we then, transition then to the other nothing. thing. So the power is still in the people. Yeah, it always is. It's just harder to shift at the it's start. It's hard to shift. Yeah, and like also it takes, a train, takes time. Yeah. yeah, it takes time too to, to shift it. Yeah. Mate, i got to tell you – I really needed that surf. Oh, how good was that? Yeah. So we should tell everyone we went surfing. It's like, you know, a few minutes before lunchtime and basically our day, although I regard all of this morning as work because you came and picked me up at 7 a.m. Yeah. And we had just good business, mind-opening conversations about life and biz and tech. And then we surfed and got some exercise, had a few ideas while we were out there, caught a few waves. Yeah, I got and a then couple. We had, yeah. And then we had uh, – who won the heat, do you think, in the you, surfing? You won, for really? sure, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. But <sighs> yeah, I thought you that you might have it. beat me too with that early aerial that you nearly pulled off. Mm-hmm, yeah, but keyword <laughs> was nearly. <laughs> it uh, was real fun. I haven't surfed then we had so lunch, long, and, then, yeah. and then now we're back here and we're – how good is this? It's great. So now, yeah, pushing 12, get pushing back. Pushing 12 and we're just uh, we're sort of working and we'll work the Savo. Yeah, because remember, 9 to 5 was invented by them for them and we don't have to buy into it. And that's the thing. That's the power is still individual. And a lot of people, um, I have this conversation. Do you have the same thing when people say, oh, man, I wish I could do what you're doing all the time? Oh, mate, all the time. It's, and I'm like, well, do it, man. It's it. not that hard. Like, And you don't have to I'll completely tell you the re- rip the Band-Aid off and leave corporate life. Start at night. Yeah. Do fucking three hours at night time instead of watching yep. bloody, you Master know, Chef. whatever the shit's on TV. Yeah. Like, Or even if you can't do that. Do what I do. Put my lappy on my on my lap. <laughs> do a bit of work. While, I do that as well. While, while that I'm, junk's yeah. on TV, and I get best of both worlds. Same. I'll Watch do that. that. I punch out some emails, do some design work, whatever I need to do. But that's the work because the future is twenty four seven. And if you're working in in corporate now, chances are you're already working twenty four hours a day anyway. I know. So and- the difference between that and working for yourself is nothing except for having not to, you know, tick a KPI box and clock in, clock out. This is work. And guess what? On Saturday, I'll do some proper work too, but then I'll go out for dinner because I went for surfing. I went surfing yeah. today, so I'll make yeah. up for it later. It's it's the same too. Like I so I I um I'm people say how how much do you work? I say, well I'm never really working and I'm never really not working. Because yeah. my, my job is kind of noticing things, yeah. right? It's a big part of my job is paying attention. Yeah, Which means I'm always kind of working and I'm – but I, I don't have to work X hours, but I don't mind if I'm working at night or on Sunday or whatever because I don't delineate. I don't delineate weekends and nine to five because that's a false construct that we need to – by the way, we need to bust that out. The Here's weekend a couple, thing? The weekend uh, thing Even bullshit. like nine to five, it's like – why is there traffic jams? Uh, let me give you a little idea. Here's an idea why there's traffic jams. Because everyone goes to work at the same time. <laughs> Simple. You don't say, right? Yeah. Okay. The government go and spend billions building new roads. Here's a better idea. Create an incentive for companies to have half their people stay home half of the week. Yeah. Right? Then the roads are going to be half as busy. Or start and finish right? whenever start you want. Start and finish whenever you want. No, create tax incentives. Yeah. Don't build roads. Create tax incentives. And then guess what? That person's working at home in their local community. They go and spend money at their local cafe. They yep. go pick their kids up from school. They can go and help out the school with something because we're not a slave to nine mm. to five, which, by the way, was only invented because that was when the sun shone in the window of the factories. That was it. And the last no- time I looked, we've got electricity now, so I'm wondering why we're still slaves to nine to five. And we went to the office. You know why? Because we didn't have the tools of production in our house. Yeah, now, now you've got a laptop. Yeah. It's in your pocket. It's in your laptop. The tools of production are now distributed. Why are we still driving to a filing cabinet in the city filled with humans? Yeah. What? It's that shit is crazy. Ridiculous, hey. It's off the scale, stupid legacy mm. thinking. Yeah, it's – I love I, – I must admit I do love walking into those big filing cabinets called skyscrapers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just walking around going, are you – guys, do you do this – all day. Why did, why, why did you do – why – dude, you can do I more did shit it. at home. Like, you've never done that, but I've no. done it, and I know how horrible it is. It's depressing, oh. mate. Man, if like, I have to – last week I did two days in Sydney for a client in their 
corporate office and it was like 8.30, rock in, 5.30, walk out. I felt like a zombie. Like and I'd, you felt, you just I hated it, were you just hating it? Man, I had this fluoro tan, this shitty coffee. Ugh. I had no idea what was going on. It just on. feels wrong, doesn't it? Yeah. Just doesn't, we're not meant to be doing that. We're meant to be out in the world, you know? So I had to put the microphone down for that speed that, pro- that was pro level because I didn't even see it. But that would need some really good algorithmic artificial intelligence to tell that that big fluffy <laughs> microphone thing you've got. Is, yeah. And I don't think there is a law that says Can't podcast you shall not podcast while driving. Yeah. Because you know what? If they pulled you over, they'd say, oh, you got a phone here. So that's not a phone. No, prove it. Because you know you're allowed to eat a hamburger with one hand while you're driving, but you're not allowed to use your phone. And I say, why Why There's, is there a delineation between hamburgers and phones? I'm probably better on my phone than eating a hamburger. Yeah, eating you know, a hamburger, like, for sure. Eating a hamburger is really hard and you drop the lettuce and you look down in your lap and crash into the person in yeah. front of you. Man. We haven't the, even scratched these, the surface yet I'm, on innovation oh, yet. No. We could talk for 10 hours, right? I think we should and I think we will. <laughs> but We'll maybe this, split it up into two parts. This this whole thing, and I love what you just said about you know the billions of dollars being spent on infrastructure, roads, all those sorts of things to beat a traffic jam, because everyone starts at the same damn time. Yeah. The other like, <laughs> so the I band aid, the, the, the new roads are band aid. It's a band aid. That's, that's the all problem. It is. It, the problem is everyone going to work at the same time. There's a simultaneous problem here of of. Uh, people not finding purpose in their lives because they don't understand what they're doing um, for, you know, for the man. They get into this mundane, like, routine, which is clocking in and clocking out. They're not a part of their community, don't have the connection. If you did change and create those incentives for organisations to allow their people to work when they want, just like we do, give them the tools so they can do that because it's not something that you can just go, hey, work from home for now. The first two weeks, you're going to be so lazy. You get distracted by the fridge, the TV, the internet. Yeah. There's a lot of like self-motivation. and You, need, and you, you do need a certain – there's a certain type of person who is self-motivated. And, and I think there's even the routine of it could be taught. There is sure. certain elements that you can teach that. So that becomes a that. new business opportunity. Use that word startup. Yeah. So, okay – we are a consulting firm, startup, who teach you and your employees how to work from home effectively, All right? And we train mm. people on good habits and good methods. And we found that people that work from home are X amount happier, X amount more efficient, and your cost on your office drops 50% because instead of having somewhere for everyone to sit, we have enough room for half of our employees and really cool spaces people want to hang in when they do come there That's it. for their meeting days. And actually, see, there's another startup idea That's just it. like that. That's it. Done. Like, Any, so, anyone wants so, to buy that? Call uh, Jordy and Tron, and, and we'll make and it happen. And we'll make it happen. That's it. We'll uh, we'll set you. We'll get you going. The, but that, that's the, a real business opportunity right now. But do you know, it's so so expensive to replace employees in businesses. It's happening every every single day. The the percentage is rising because people are trying to find more, and because the whole startup entrepreneurship. Um, scene is kind of looking, you know, in the media. Looks more it attractive. Looks it looks attractive. So it looks people attractive. are chasing that in organisations that have the new open plan and the free yoga and the free coffee and beers and all that sort of shit. That's not what makes, you know, that's not real that's entrepreneurship. Not the truth, mate. That's, that's not window true. dressing. That's window that's dressing. It. And so people are moving that's on from Silicon organizations. Valley bullshit. That is. is what that is. That is. You know what? I don't give a shit about your free beers and your funky office and all that. You know why I want to be an entrepreneur? Because I want to say, I built this, I made this, I did this, and I got paid for it. And I'm in control. And I'm in control. I, know. I want independence, freedom, and control in my life. I don't want someone telling me what to do. I, the control and independence can be for a mission of a company too. It doesn't have to be individual. For you and me, it's like, I know yeah, I where just, I want to go, and yeah, you know and, where and you want to go. a little bit yeah, loose. Like, I can't. I don't want to spend my life living someone else's dream. Yeah, but some people... And there's no right or wrong here. It's just yeah, sure. it's different. the difference between having, I guess, entrepreneurial tendencies and being able to work in different ways and being, I guess, adaptable, buzzword We're, alert. Yeah. Or yeah, some being want, a real entrepreneur. Yeah, that's, some that's the difference. Want, yeah, to do the cool stuff and what but but happy to do it working for someone else. Yeah. And in fact, I think that in an environment that's a little bit freer, you would enjoy that more. So I spent in my corporate days some time in corporate marketing and business management which was a little bit more constricted and I spent a few years in advertising and the advertising was one of those environments which is a little bit more self-directed and I enjoyed that a lot more 
but you mm. still have that 15th of the month you're going to get paid and then that's yeah, security. kind of cool. So and security, yeah. yeah. Yep. There is uh, the the side, the I guess a, a sub product, I guess is the maybe the best way to describe it. By having people, allowing people to have more flexibility and, and realizing that they're adults and holy shit, they'll probably do what you want them to do if they understand the reasons behind that and understand the common goal and the vision of the organization they can work from the beach with us today if they wanted to and that's going to answer the question of this work-life balance because of technology our emails are going off continuously my 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 legs about to vibrate off i don't know what's happening in my phone (laughs) over here but that's going to happen all the time and if you work nine to five like in inverted commas with my fingers um if you work nine to five for an organization, you're still getting emails at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, so this yeah. nine to five is bullshit anyway because everybody's working That's at really, home. You know what? In, now I, already. I'm not sure if it's France or Germany, but one of those countries, we can maybe put in the show notes if you have them, is uh, outlawed sending work emails outside of hours, which I, oh, think's, really? I, I think that's interesting. Right now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but it's interesting because – if you're going to work in these hours and these are meant to be your hours, well, then make them your hours. If it is that you say, oh, well, you kind of don't really work those hours, well, then don't be as strict on me being there at nine to five. So you can't have it both ways. Yeah. Either it is nine to five and it's nine to five, which might be valid. Which we could be cool. Uh, could be cool. Yeah. Or it's now we're fluid. So if you're going to send me emails at 10 at night, don't expect me to be there at 10 in the morning necessarily because you're not yeah. respecting my time. So why should I respect yours? So there's this imbalance of respect. Yeah. Is there, I wonder, I wonder what the, I guess the data says for those organizations. If everybody's working nine to five, then it's just, it becomes the new norm and it's, well, not the new, the original norm yeah. to go, oh, cool. I sent an email at five minutes to five on, on Monday afternoon. I'm going to get a reply on Tuesday morning. I cool. think that's fine. And if everybody understands that, sweet. Now, I think the the issue probably arises from the first organization that's, that replies at 6 o'clock that night, at 10 o'clock yeah, at night. Yeah, then you get this competitive They've spiral. They've got an advantage. Yeah. They've got an advantage. And then they're like, holy shit, we've got to keep up with them. They work all they the time. They're yeah. killing well, it. Well, it depends what business you're in. Well, to incentivize their staff, that's where free yoga and Wi-Fi yeah. and yeah. floating it's all a trick. Bean You know bangs. what I call it? I call it, I've got in my book, The Lessons School Forgotten, which you should totally read. Uh, and in there, I in one of the last chapters, I talk about Google and all of this having food. I call it the sushi stooge. Sushi stooge. Yeah, it's the sushi <laughs> stooge. Here's what you yeah. get. You ready? We give you free sushi any day you want, $25 worth of sushi. I mean, how much sushi can you eat, right? Yeah, not much. Right. And we're not even buying it because we pay a chef to like cook the sushi. So it's kind of cheap for us to make it for everyone in our office. So we give you the free sushi so you stay till midnight. You're a $200 an hour engineer. You go, wow, man, I love working here because I get free sushi. Dude, you just got $25 worth of sushi to work an extra four hours at $200 an hour. Who's getting stooged here? Yeah. The sushi stooge. The sushi stooge. TM, Steve Sammartino, (laughs) Sammatron. (laughs) Drop the fluffy mic. (laughs) Fluffy mic drop. (laughs) But but you're right. It's an illusion to to trick us. It's a trick, mate. It's a full-on trick. And guess what else we do? We have little sleeping pods and we do your dry cleaning for you and, and we have yoga classes. Why? To keep you here so that we only pay you half your wage and you're working your whole life, mate. And then you know what I just you realized? Go- That's the same sticky tactic that they use for me to sign up with my Facebook or Google with another application of course they to do. keep me coming back of course. and to stay within the platform. They're doing that physically. Yeah, by they, saying, here's this cool shit to stay here with. Well, that, they make it easy for you to sign in because, so that they can track you and find more stuff you like because they've seen all the other websites you went to as well. Yeah. I visit like four websites total. Yeah, but. same. I, I go to the same ones all the time. But I spend anyway. most of my life on Behance, scrolling pretty things. There you go. That's it. What's wrong with that? You know, I just look at design I, things. I just, I just spend my time on YouTube watching surfing clips. Yeah. I'm super efficient. So that, You'd be that, surprised how many hours I can waste watching that. That's what we were just talking about at breakfast. Let's go back there, which was the insight that I, I read about. And we, we've, I've, I've spoke to, you know, Gus and Hannah and Thomas at Rochambeau about this a few times now and it's this concept of we're all trying to hack something and what I mean by that is that you go on to Facebook or you read somewhere and it's always like the seven ways to get fit today <laughs> oh, and I the, love that you brought this up. the three minute 
fucking workout that will improve your brain, whatever it is. Of course it will. The, the, it's the food, always, the, the diet that's been keeping you back. Here's the new, here's, here's the, the new, one. Here's the one, Here's mate. the thing. The top 10 things you need to know about design yep. 2019. Today. That's right it. Right now. How to get rich in these 12 steps that billionaires use. What billionaires do before breakfast. You know, they get up at 4 a.m. You know what? If I was a billionaire, let me tell you now. If you're not sleeping until 10.30, you, you don't deserve to be a billionaire, right? Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly right. And now uh, the concept there is that everybody knows the, the saying or the, the ideology of it takes 10,000 hours to become a master of something, but people are watching like 10,000 hours on a skill online without actually practicing <laughs> the fucking skill. But that is, the, mate, when you said that to me, that I love that. It's like I would rather watch 10,000 hours on how to learn to be a rock climber, which I think was the example you gave <laughs> yeah, this morning, I've uh, rather it. than actually spend any hours climbing rocks. But I'll just watch 10,000 hours. Mate, the amount of videos you watch on how to get rich and how to learn to rock climb and the great diet and how to lift weights and bloody – Mate, I've seen them all. I've watched them all. It's crazy. Just get out there and do it. And I've I reckon, never been rock climbing and I've watched heaps of rock climbing. Really? I've never been. That's and hilarious. I, I, you know – I, you hear the Alex Honnold stories. You listen to the podcast. I literally have watched rock climbing tips and tricks. Because I reckon there's got to be a 100 to 1 oh, or 10 man. to 1 advantage for every hour you spend doing something versus reading about it. I reckon there's a there, there's a book idea. The 100 to 1, we'll call it. Right? Imagine that. What's the it's, ratio? It's, it yeah. must be 100 to 1. I reckon, like, let's say you could watch surfing. And we were talking about... Yeah, it was but, funny. After we went surfing, we yeah. were watching a guy who was a really good surfer. He was better than us, clearly. Way better, yeah. Way better. And we were watching him in the water. He was really ripping and surfing well. And then we were just took our wetsuits off. He caught this one wave and he missed a section. And we were both like, oh, he missed that bit there. He cooked it. He, he should have went up. That. And he should have hit this bit here. And it, yeah, fine. Should have, could have, would have. But I'm sure Wasn't he's it? thinking that as well. Yeah. But his feet were in the wax on the board. And next time, he will know what to do in that next place. Next time, because he felt he his body fucking and he's, did yeah, it. Yeah, his leg was too far this way or that way. And, he, and we're watching it telling, yeah, anyone could look and say what you should have did. But? But doing it is different. And it's, it's got to be, is it 10 to 1? Is it 100 to 1? I reckon for every hour doing is equivalent to 100 hours reading, maybe 1,000. You'll learn more in the one hour of doing versus the hundred hours of reading, watching. Imagine, let's. Oh, geez, I'd love I wonder, to. How we would you work that out? How can we? How could we experiment that? Well, I think maybe we, get we need two to get people. It's two be people. Skill acquisition. So, so two people have never done something. Yeah. So, skill acquisition. Damo Farrow, if you're listening to this, you can help us. He's the head of skill acquisition All at right, AFL. Now you're talking. So he could help us. But I think we'd have to get two people who don't know how to do something. One person watch videos and hit for every 10 hours of watching, maybe does one hour of doing. Practice and the other and person do 10 hours of doing versus one, one hour of watching. watching. And we'll, That's what we've got to do. But we need do. to assess them at the start to make sure that their skills at the start on the first kick or whatever skill it is, snowboarding, running, riding a bike, whatever, mm. right? Um, do you think it should be something like... Maybe something, something that, like riding a bike. What about like piano? Yeah, that's a good one as well. So it doesn't rely on fitness, it's more mental. Yeah, it's a practice one and everyone's got kind of, well, Cause not be, everyone, but most people have fingers. Like yeah. That was so on PC. I'm so sorry for anyone yeah. who's missing a finger. And by the way, yeah. shout out to you, Gus Bell Bolton. You nearly chopped off one of mine, but that's a long story. <laughs> you, you did. You're lucky you, you still got that finger. How crooked is it? It's definitely not. Yeah, it's, it's not, not what a, it was before it's Gus got a, knifed it anyway. It's just got a subtle 90 you, degree Gus. bend in yeah, it. Yeah, I still love you, mate. Most people wouldn't, but I do. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder if we could do Maybe that Maybe piano's sort of thing. the one, and I've got a piano in my house we can do it on. That is a great experiment. I Mate, that would go viral, baby. We're making a little video out of that. We're in. Let's All do right. it. There's a little side project. All right, let's do it. Two, right. two people, we'll figure it out. We'll do a call out to and see I think if someone wants to do this. I think it's adults who've never played a musical instrument. I think that'd be better because kids, kids are... Nah, kids, kids learn. Too, yeah, they learn quick and different rates quicker. and all that. All right, piano. That's the one, actually. It could be it. There's also um, an interesting movement with VR with this as well, and I've, I've spoken to a few people working on, on tech startups using VR to visualize um, doing a certain action. So that's a kind of crossover though, isn't it's it? A so hybrid. that's halfway. It's a hybrid. It's half yeah. mental, half physical. But mm. you know what though? On the piano one, it, it's fair to say that that's quite a physical activity, but what about a more cerebral activity? Like, like, like <laughs> speaking. So in business, large part of what we do in business is organizing and communicating. 
okay? Oh, so, so oh. that's a bit different. So that's Hang a on. bit different. You're going somewhere good here okay. because this is an area we both know heaps about and there's a million videos about business advice and leadership advice. I wonder if we could have one person watching leadership videos but not really having the opportunity to practice them in real yeah, life. Yeah, doesn't have a team that they lead or something. And the other person comes to work with us and goes to the meetings. And see who does better. And, and we go, oh, hey, here's, you know, here's Johnny or here's, you know, Mary. She's running the show today. Mary, go. <laughs> you know, that it's a massive risk to, to us. But yeah, but it's a risk worth taking. You film it, right? And then you get a viral video how do you, for free. How do you measure uh, corporate business leadership acumen? And see, see, that's it's really, hard to it's measure. really tough. So, see, it, it's really tough because you'd have to ask someone to answer questions maybe and just say, you know, a good way might, might be to do it is to get someone who's managed a team for X period of time and someone who hasn't but – watches all these videos on how to manage a team, let's say, in leadership, and then ask them both 10 questions on what they do in certain situations and see which answers we think are better. But then again, that yeah. might not be the truth because they might answer it better and be more compelling on their voice, but the only true way to know is you've got to lead people and see if they do what you want it to do. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow, but, this is tough, right. right? We're going to have to, but, we're going but to, have I think to figure we agree. this one out. I think we agree that you're going to learn more by doing than you are by reading and watching. Yeah, for sure. Whether it's piano or leadership. Surfing. Well, hang on. We've got to prove it. I'm already being biased. See? <laughs> I'm not a very good scientist. Yeah, for yeah, sure. This is the outcome. Yeah, this is the outcome. Hey, guess what? <laughs> we you don't have an experiment. Do we just threw it out, baby. Yeah. Because we know the answers. Yeah. Oh, far out. I wonder the simple way would be somebody who's never led um, oh, wrong lane. Yeah, next lane. Turn left. Okay. Well, not in this little bit here, this tricky bit. It's the other Princess bit. Princess Highway? Yeah, that one. That one. Cool. The, the back way. Um, we could get someone who loves watching the business videos, like the Gary V videos and the. <laughs> You know the all those ones, and um, <laughs> the entrepreneurs that but's never done anything, and then just chuck them in the deep end. Yeah, just say you both like, got you both you go. got X amount of months to build something, the same startup with the same customers. Has to be like oh. for like because that's what an experiment is in a lab. You got to have the same ingredients, the same situation, and just change one thing, and the one difference is the two different people. Oh man, they're very very hard to test because people have different life experience and, and all of that. And success, it looks and, different to different people. Yeah, but and also it would be different, different levels of motivation. One. But surfing, yeah. totally skill. Yeah, two people learning surfing. One surfing's breaks. risking because there's yeah. like actual life or death. Because if you get if you can't swim very well, yeah. But let's say we get two people who can swim, and one we get them to watch ten hours and practice an hour. And then one, we get them to practice 10 hours and watch an hour. And we could do that in the new wave pool easy. because it will be a controlled area. Oh, we could. Because nice. that's what I mean. Like uh, I've gone yes. to the beach, it's still luck. Yeah, you're right. You might have got a better wave. Kelly Slater, if you're listening. <laughs> hey, Kelly, listen, I know you love experiments and learning. And, and, and lucky for you, Cal, we're the type of guys that can just, just help you out in that area. We'll do it for free. <laughs> Man, we could talk for absolute... For hours, for absolute hours. Um, there's traffic and lots of cars and I'm getting paranoid. Yeah, so I you reckon should. let's put this down as chapter one in our in our chat. Whoa, there's a trailer with a million bicycles on it. All mashed up. All mashed up. Um, let's do this again. Let's do it again, Next mate. Surf. I, gee, I don't know. I mean, how businessy was it? I don't know. But, geez, we explored oh, some con- – some, some, uh, had Korean, some breath, didn't Korean we? Destroyed. We, we talked about the creating part. So, man, thanks so much for the chat. Thanks for the surf. Let's, welcome. Uh, let's do it again. And it's a nice way to pass some time in a car. Perfect. So, um, epic. Thanks for listening. Uh, this is Create and Destroy with Steve Sammartino. All the show notes will be down the bottom. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Thanks, man. Cheers, brother. Yoo.